And so, folks, my name is Brent Rhodes. I'm a part of, uh, of BBB Educational Enterprises coming, coming to y'all today. And we're just, we're glad that folks uh, across our states that we work with have been able to join us today um, to talk about Amplify Reading. And we're just excited and thrilled to have uh, Amplify Reading as a partner of ours um, to now bring uh, to our districts that we work and partner with already on literacy initiatives. And, you know, I can tell you as a parent, this has become very real in the fact that we are now going to continue remote learning in the district in which my kids are, 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 are students at. And so one of the things that we've continued to talk through the summer with districts as they continue to plan as they reopen, whether they're in a, a remote setting in which this becomes even more real or in a, in a uh, in-person setting, that the idea of student agency is an important part, a part of students' um, ability to become literate. Um, to become active readers in their life is really the big thing that drives students to become active and, and, and readers for life. And so we believe that that's an important part of the instructional model for literacy. And so that's really what the goal of Amplify Reading is, is, is not to replace as a whole the instruction of the kids. We still want kids to be exposed to standards. We want kids to have good read alouds and other aspects of many lessons and whatnot within their everyday instructional model. But we have to engage students at the instructional level of which they are at and push them forward. And that's a big challenge while we solve for that in small group, we still have to solve for that through independent reading and self student agency. And so that's what Amplify Reading does is, is allow for us to understand where that child is, whether they're becoming a reader or are growing as a reader. It meets them where they at, they're at, targets where their deficits are, and propels them forward. And it propels them forward in a meaningful and engaging way. And so I'm going to turn this over uh, to Laura Seal today to really give you a better insight into what is Amplify Reading and how is it an effective tool to serve that aspect of your instructional day, whether you're in a remote setting or in a face-to-face. -face. So Laura, please take over from here. Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction, Brent, and thank you all for taking time out of your Wednesday to join us. Um, I'm very excited to talk to you about Amplify Reading. As Brent said, it is really, um, it's always been a great program, but it's especially um, impactful and, and supportive of the current moment we're in and that we see ourselves continuing to be in for, for you know, at least nine or so weeks, but probably more. So um, in, in brief, Amplify Reading is a personalized student-driven um, instruction and skill practice program focusing on the key areas of literacy for all your students in K-5. So as Brent mentioned, whether they need remediation all the way up through enrichment, they will find that in Amplify Reading, and frankly, they will enjoy doing so. Um, but to touch on the current landscape, and this is uh, you know, not a surprise to any of us, but I'd like to call up the data that um, NWEA shared a couple months ago about the anticipated COVID slide. So we're used to the summer slide uh, and have different ways of, of addressing it as we head to back to school, um, but we're anticipating much steeper learning losses because we lost instructional time for our students in grades three through eight um, as represented here, but also especially for our K-2 kiddos. And so it's really important for all of us to um, you know, first and foremost, know where our students are along this spectrum. How far behind are they? Where are their weaknesses? Um, and of course, you know, as students were, were doing independent learning at home, um, they were getting different levels of access to instruction from their teachers, also from their parents, their siblings. So they're going to be all over the map. So we need to know where they are. And then we need to be able to provide students with high quality, personalized programs that they can navigate on their own. Own, whether they're in the classroom with their teachers or they're at home um, to start bridging those literacy gaps uh, as soon as possible. And the other thing we, we need in this space kind of opens up for is our new approaches. You know, before COVID really uh, hit, we were um, reviewing the information that we got from our nation's report card, which indicated that for the 20th year in a row, two thirds of our fourth graders and our eighth graders are still not reading proficiently. So we were already starting to think about what have we been doing over the past 20 years that has been working, but, but a bigger question is what hasn't been working. 
what are new approaches, strategies, research that we can embed into our practices to finally break that streak over the past 20 years. And so I'm really excited to talk about Amplify Reading because it is perfect for this moment and it is new. It is based on the latest research um, in, in instruction, pedagogy, but also um, engagement for students. So there are four key differentiators about Amplify Reading that make it um, really stand out from, from other programs that you may have used or currently are using with your students. Um, it has a, a really unique approach to student engagement. We have year-long storylines um, that are, are motivating students to do the hard work of learning to read at their level and also keeping them interested to come back um, day after day to see what's happening along that narrative. We are personalized in three different ways. So students are placed into the program uh, based on our own um, assessment platform, MCLASS, based on other assessments like iReady, iStation, NWEA, or if we don't have access to placement or assessment data, we have an internal placement tool that will get students started at the right point um, in the program across 13 different skill areas. One of those skill areas is a newly researched one called comprehension processes. And this is essentially the missing link between um, a student being able to decode and being able to comprehend. And as a result, we're seeing really strong growth in our students in just 30 minutes a week. They are outperforming their, the, their peers who are not using the program. We recommend students use the program for about 45 minutes a week. Um, but again, this is just the minimum that we have seen growth. And actually during remote learning over the past several months, we've seen that students are, are using Amplify Reading um, about an hour each week uh, on average. So we're going to dive into the program and really focus on exploring it as we as we talk through some of these key features. So we'll start with our teacher dashboard. So this is where teachers have access to student performance and usage data within Amplify Reading. As I just mentioned, um, students are placed into the program across 13 different skill areas that you can see outlined here at the top. Um, a lot of other programs will place students into um, areas across five or six skill domains, but we wanted to get really granular um, with, with what data we're providing to, to teachers, but then also, um, you know, we know that phonics is not just one blanket thing, it's made up of different areas and, and that students are going to, especially now, have different abilities within those. So we really want to be granular with how we are placing students and reporting on their growth. Um, so starting from the left here, you can see usage information. We actually recently added this daily login column as a response to the feedback we were getting from teachers during remote learning. That it was really important that they be able to see whether or not students had logged in that day. So we just released this a month or so ago. Um, if students have logged in, you'll see this check mark and a timestamp of when they logged into the program. You can also see usage over the past seven days. And again, we're looking for about 45 minutes here, but the minimum really is 30 minutes. Then based on students' placement into the program, they are going to have a different um, uh, set of sub-skill goals. These are kind of a minimum, again, with that 30 minutes a week that we, um, we've identified to be able to see growth. But students can and probably will exceed this minimum number of subskills mastered um, as they as they go through the program throughout the school year. Um, and then you can see their progress across these 13 different skill areas at a glance. If you see progress indicated in green, it means that that student is working on that skill area on grade level. If it's orange, it means it's below grade level. And if you happen to see purple, that would mean um, above grade level. You can see check marks here that indicate that that student has completed the, their sub-skill goals um, for that skill area, but again, they can continue working on, on skills in that, in that band. Um, and then you might also notice some trouble spots here. Um, if we click in on this student, we can see more information about what they are currently working on. So as I mentioned, we have kind of a year-long narrative for students um, based on their grade that's divided into what we call quests. So you can think of this structure as um, a book uh, made up of different chapters. 
So every student in first grade is going to go on this narrative quest called Stuffed Up Sam, but what they're going to be practicing will be based on their initial placement and their performance. So this student, Ellie, is working on the main idea of pictures, so she's doing some comprehension work alongside um, segmenting syllables, which she has completed. And then here's where she struggled a bit. She struggled with um, kindergarten level irregular words. So what Amplify Reading does for this student is we remove this content from their current quest. We don't want that student to get frustrated or stuck. So this student would continue working on the main ideas of pictures. And then in their next quest, they would see maybe the next set of activities in this comprehension um, band. They th would then see some precursor skills for these irregular words and maybe some other skills that would help them um, be better set up for success when they encounter this trouble spot content again in the subsequent quest. We find that students are often mastering that trouble spot area the second time they've seen it because we're giving them skills that are meant to support them in that skill area. So teachers don't have to jump in and intervene or unlock domains or anything like that. But of course, we want to give teachers that information about where students were struggling and what resources they can use to support that student in a one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, instructional model or in a small group. So this is just an example of one of those resources that, that teachers can use. They also have access to a bank of all of the resources included in our program that they can browse through to lead their own small group uh, workshops based on what they know their students need, um, or they can send home for parents to do this with their kiddos. Uh, very flexible um, ways that they can use the resources available to them. So this is again what they're currently working on, but if you scroll down, you can see where students are in, in relation to their overall um, skill uh, goals. So here I can see that this student has 12 sub-skill goals for phonological awareness, which they're working on below grade. If I hover over these rectangles here, I can see what the student has already worked on and completed when they completed that, and I can also see what is coming up for them. When I get to this flag, that's that minimum goal that I have set, that the program has set for the student. So you can see that across the 13 different skill areas. We also have a direct line to our support team um, through this chat icon. Uh, our support team is, uh, is a really wonderful group of people who are there to answer any questions that teachers have about um, technical technical um, requirements, pedagogy, instruction, how to, how to read the dashboard, data, things like that. We also make sure that in our um, resources for parents and caregivers, including a website, uh, that they have uh, the direct email and phone number of our support team. We saw in the past several months that a lot of the questions we were getting from teachers were on behalf of parents. And we want to make sure that teachers um, are, are able to focus all of their energy on instruction and we can take the burden of, of um, making sure that parents have everything that they need and have their questions answered. And then we can also see a class summary um, view of the data that we just looked at, kind of at a student by student level. So here, you know, if a teacher has two minutes to look at their dashboard at the beginning of the week um, or at the end of the week, they can see what percent of their students have met their, um, their usage targets of that 30 minutes a week, and maybe which students need a nudge. Maybe the student um, hasn't had time at home to, to use the, a device. Maybe they're sharing it with their siblings. Maybe it's, it's a good opportunity for that parent to check in with that family and see if there's anything they can do to support. You'll also get kind of a roll up news feed of what content areas students are mastering. And then here at the bottom is kind of a roll up of that of, of where students are struggling with their trouble spots. Um, and again, the activities that teachers can use if they want to to support those students. Um, we're going to dive into the program now. If you have questions as I'm going through the product, please drop them into the Q&A chat box um, and we will be sure to answer them while we're going through this or at the end I can take some questions. Um, but for now we're going to dive into the student experience and see what it looks like for our, our students. Um, starting with our youngest students in kindergarten and first grade. Uh, these kiddos 
uh, land in a town called Bookerton that you see here. Bookerton is a really wonderful community uh, of diverse um, experiences uh, where students are, are going on their, their reading journey as they're learning to read um, amongst their, their peers in Bookerton. The storyline here is essentially that you are all gearing up for a community play at the end of the year. Um, and as you are doing that, you are, are meeting your neighbors and, and helping them solve problems in, um, in their lives with the help of your Curioso that you see um, kind of popping up and down here. The Curioso is a student's customizable companion on their, on their literacy journey that's going to grow alongside them. As students are, are gaining momentum in their skill practice, they unlock different customizations for their Curioso as well as literacy themed powers. So for example, one of the powers that a Curioso will, will um, earn is called book magic. And it allows them to pull things, pull items out of books. Um, and this helps them solve problems in town. So in one quest, for example, there is uh, a coffee shop owner, Lyle, who's not feeling so great and he really wants to make some soup, but he doesn't have the ingredients. So as you're doing your skill practice, you are powering up your Curioso and then can use its book magic to pull um, peas out of Jack and the, and the magic beanstalk. Um, so just one example of how we're really trying to infuse all aspects of our program and our narratives with um, helping students understand that reading is magical and really powerful. Um, functionally, this Curioso is telling me that I have a quest in this location. So I'm going to click here. And so again, the quest is offering both narrative and story and, um, and skill practice. So the narrative here is that I've just met my Curioso. I'm so excited to learn more, but in order to do so, I have to do some skill practice. The, um, the content and activities that are going to be served up to me here um, via these games or these e-reader texts, again, is going to be determined by my initial placement and then my performance. So we're going to adapt based on how students are doing um, within these sub skills. I'm going to show one example of a game called Picky Goblins that focuses on letter sound correspondences. You'll see here that this is level eight. So there, um, each game has several levels um, that students will, will work through that get progressively more challenging. We serve them up to students in bite-sized chunks um, tied to a concrete subskill. So you can have two students working on the same game, but at different levels. Each game has a um, what we call onboarding, which is instructions on how to play the game and what the skill topic is. So we're gonna let that go through and then I will call out some key features in this game. These toasts have letters on them. This letter makes the sound mm. like in vase. Now you say it. This letter makes the sound Z. like in zipper. Now you say it. This letter makes the sound B. like in baseball. Now you say it. This letter makes the sound o. like in ladder. Now you say it. These goblins are picky eaters. Feed the goblin the toast that makes the sound it says. B. Tap the mouth icon to see how the sound is made. B. Looks like the goblin wants. B. Drag this toast to the goblin. Give the goblins the toast they want. Tap the goblin to hear the sounds again. So there are two things I'll call out here to start. One is you notice that as the letter sounds are being introduced, we had a drop down of a mouth articulation animation. Um, we know from research how important it is for students to see the letter sounds being formed to help make that connection stick. And this is even more, unfortunately, important now as we're thinking about what back to school looks like. If our teachers and our students are wearing masks, they're not going to have the opportunity to see, to see the, the letter sounds being formed. And so it's really critical that, that um, you know, they have exposure to that in this program. 
The other thing that I'll call out here is you'll notice that we have these pictorial mnemonics for each letter sound. Um, these fade away over time as students demonstrate mastery of that letter sound. So I call these out as two kind of um, examples of how we've embedded research into our program with the mouth animations, um, and then also how we've leveraged the digital format to do something that would be challenging to do in the physical, like having those pictures fade away over time. Um, but we, can, we know that students are, are not always going to master things right away. So let's take a look at what happens when a student is struggling in this game. So let's see, the letter sound is, mm. let's say I try this. Mm. Try again. Tap the mouth icon to see how the sound is made. So the program reminds me of that scaffold I have a, available to me, but let's say I'm still not getting mm. it. Not quite. Tap the toast that makes the sound you hear. Mm. So now it's showing me that scaffold and it's reducing the number of choices I have. But let's say I, I still don't quite get it. This letter makes the sound mm. like in vine. Drag all the words that start with mm. So I'm then taken out of that standard um, round because I'm really struggling with this letter sound and I'm given explicit practice and multiple opportunities to practice this specific letter sound. So as a student, I would complete this activity, um, show the program that I'm ready to, to try this letter sound in relation to the others and I'd go back into that standard gameplay model. So each game has its own scaffolding loop uh, to support students where when they are struggling. The other thing I'll call out quickly here um, is that we do have a number of, of uh, supports for our English language learners. For our Spanish speakers in particular, we have a setting where they can turn on Spanish narrative. So the two, the, um, the year long narratives and the quest experiences can be um, listened to in Spanish, as well as instruction in over half our games. So let's take a quick listen here. Estas tostadas tienen letras. Esta letra hace el sonido. Mm. And so these supports are really aimed at helping our students learn how to read in English. Um, I'm going to move over now to second and third grade. Um, second and third graders are also in the town of Bookerton, um, but there's a different narrative now. There's a, a new neighbor in town, um, and as she moved in, a lot of strange things started happening. So she clearly has some uh, mystery around her and you're, you're excited to figure out what she knows about the town that maybe you don't. And actually, as you do so, the map of Bookerton actually expands. So helping students kind of are reflecting in the program that as students are making that shift from learning to read to reading to learn, that your world is really opening up and things that you didn't know were there, um, kind of uh, you, you start to see things differently. Um, this is a different Curioso, but it's telling me the same thing, that I have a quest in this location. So we'll, we'll dive in here and you'll hear some of the narrative in Spanish before we go into a game. Hmm. Las brujas de Roald Dahl? Parece que tu curioso piensa que algo en este libro nos podría ayudar. Ah, pero necesitamos un poco de energía antes de que pueda usar su poder mágico de libros. So we're going to look at a game called Unmask That. Um, this game focuses on pronoun noun substitutions. Um, which is a, a comprehension process. Like I mentioned at the start, um, comprehension processes are that missing link between being able to decode and being able to comprehend. These are, are things that we need to actually explicitly teach our, our struggling students, our beginning readers, and our English language learners um, to do while they're reading. That, um, and these are things that help them build a model of what they're reading as they are reading so that they can answer those comprehension questions after. So let's look at this example to, to help kind of solidify what the concept is. Some words can replace other words in sentences. Authors often do this to make their writing more interesting and so that they don't repeat the same words over and over. Pick the word or words that are being replaced by the highlighted text. 
Uh, so the sentence here reads, so Aunt Tanya and Uncle Tim warned that the grapes were not real. Little Billy kept trying to eat them. And the game is asking me to identify the antecedent to the pronoun them. Uh, this is a really important thing that we start teaching our students that we don't typically do. Because you can imagine a student is reading this um, as part of a larger story and maybe they gloss over the word them um, and, or they think that them must be referring to Aunt Tanya and Uncle Tim, but then don't think about going back and, okay, so little Billy kept trying to eat his aunt and uncle. That, that doesn't make sense. So we really have to help our students learn these processing tools um, to monitor meaning as they are going along through the text and this game does exactly that so i i know that this that them is actually referring back to the grapes well, let's see if i get it wrong no that's not quite right this is the correct answer let's try this one which of the outlined words replaces the highlighted text so students are shown the correct answer and then they're taken to a new text that has more scaffolding. So here, um, there are two choices I have as antecedents. Um, so students will continue this kind of practice until they are ready to have those scaffolds off and they'll go back into the standard round. Um, this is such an important skill and is just one of six that Amplify Reading includes from the comprehension front. Uh, and we're the only program that includes this direct instruction. And it's one of the reasons that we're seeing really strong growth across our students and especially our English language learners. Um, but of course, it's not enough to do this skill practice in isolation. We have to do that hard work of transferring it to actual texts. Um, so Amplify Reading includes an e-reader for students in K, all the way from K through five where students have the opportunity to to read text on their own and then and then do some of that skill transfer work as you read this book be on the lookout for hidden challenges that will power up your curioso so in kindergarten through second grade students automatically have this read aloud um, option turned on for them so that they can have the text read to them they will also have the opportunity to do a clean read of the text before they go in and answer questions all students have reveal word supports. Um, if you ever see an underlined word in, in a text, it means you can click on that, that word to see an image, the part of speech, um, and a definition for words that might be unfamiliar for students. And these are, are especially um, important for English language learners. I'm going to skip ahead so I can get to the question. You've read the whole book. Let's read it again, and this time look for challenge questions to answer along the way. And so you'll see here right on the second page that there is an embedded question for me to answer. And you might recognize that mask as coming from the game we just played, Unmask That. So here it's asking me to apply that skill to this text. And it's asking me the antecedent to the pronoun they. So students will practice all different types of skills in the text itself to make sure that they are kind of solidifying that understanding with skill transfer. Um, so now I'm going to move over to fourth and fifth grade, um, which has a very different look and feel and instructional model. Um, so our fourth and fifth graders, uh, you know, they're, they're older, they are sophisticated, they're really looking for adventure and we want to give that to them while giving them the the, um, the skills that they need, especially our, our students who might be struggling in fourth and fifth grade. We wanna give them foundational skill practice um, while also giving them the supports in on-grade level texts and complex texts to be able to kind of um, bridge those gaps. So the model for fourth and fifth grade here is that students work on skills, whether it's um, on-grade level or foundational, then they move on to tier two vocabulary work before diving into this portal where they do um, interactive graphic novel close reading lessons. Um, when they come out of that portal, they, they finalize that um, their quest loop with, uh, with an e-reader text that, that are now focused on chapter books. So we're gonna look at two of these components starting with these skills. So we'll start with an on grade level game that, that some of your students might see in fourth and fifth grade. And this game is called Yearbook. Hey there, welcome to the Yearbook Committee. A yearbook has pictures of all your classmates in it. 
So after you graduate, you can look back at everyone and the superlatives and celebrate them. It is a great honor to join the yearbook committee. As our editor, you will decide how everyone gets described and remembered. Select a picture to get started. Here's information that we've collected from different sources about Tia. Tap on any document icon to get started. So you'll see that the sources are reflective of the environment of the game. They all have something to do with, um, with school or, or being a student. I'm going to choose this one. What traits do you notice about Tia in this document? And this game is all about giving students multiple at-bats with identifying character traits. So as a student, I am being asked to read the source document and then identify the character trait that is exemplified within it. So I have read this before, so I know that she is um, acting boastful Why here. Why do you think so? Highlight evidence in the text that supports your answer. And then wherever possible, we are having students go back to the text to identify their evidence. We know how important that is for solidifying their, their comprehension and then also um, you know, how it's included in state tests. Um, so I believe Great. this is the answer. Great, you need to erase a high. Great. Let's get to know Tia a bit more. So students would, would do the same type of activity with these two other sources to round out Tia with three different character traits before giving her just a fun superlative um, to reward them for the moment. And then they would move on to their other classmates. Um, but of course, we're going to have students who are still working on foundational skills, and this is where they will get that practice. We'll take a look at an advanced decoding game called Word Slide. The letter R is bossy and changes the vowel sound. The letter A by itself makes the sound A. Ah. When you add the bossy R, they make the sound R, like in this word, farm. Slide the tile to make the word form, form. Now you try. Make the word form. When you are done, slide or click the lever to check your answer. Third. So here students are given lots of at-bats with some of these tricky letter combinations. Um, Third. We know that English is a really challenging language and has Nurse. a lot of these uh, inconsistent uh, letter combinations. So we want to make sure that students are getting the practice so that they are then able to work with on-grade level text. Um, so now we're going to dive into close reading. So we have um, instruction on, on this really challenging skill um, wrapped in an experience um, of, a, of a graphic novel. And so this is allowing students to explore different worlds, different perspectives, and really trying to embed that, that thinking about what reading can do to help you understand the world and yourself. Um, so we're going to take a look at how students are introduced to the story here, um, and then we'll take a, a quick look at one of the, um, the actual lessons. My name is Olivia Wen, and, well, there's no good way to put this, but I'm in a pickle. You see, I started something I can't finish. For years, I've been using the portal under my house. Well, you know all about the portal, don't you? I've been using it to visit other worlds. Places where I could find rare, spectacular books. Books I'd never seen in Bookerton. They'd give me books from their world, and they were thrilled to read books from ours. That's when I got wind of something. Something truly unique. Something that can't exist. The Codex Magnifica. A book that knows the answer to every question. Well, I had to see it for myself. But finding the Codex is more easily said than done. I couldn't do it alone. I needed friends, allies, 
people who could be my eyes into the strange new world. Prince Tok, whose fire and spirit drives his every move. Iris, a brilliant investigator, capable of seeing through the most difficult of puzzles. Ruby, a quick-witted scamp who can see into the hearts and souls of everyone she meets. And Scadwin, a gentle poet who can see the beauty in even the ugliest of things. In return for their help, I promised each of these four eyes a chance to ask their questions to the Codex. But it's a promise, I'm sorry to say, I won't be able to keep. But you can. They need your help. I need your help. Find the Codex. Find me. And I promise, all will be answered. So that's how students are introduced to that year-long storyline that they will be embarking on with this, uh, the four eyes. This is a quick intro to a lesson. Well, we're almost there. If we don't have a plan, we'll get chewed to bits. I know. I'm just saying there is no good plan. No ship has ever returned from the ravenous isle in one piece. Welcome back! We're having a disagreement about exactly how doomed we are. So far, the choices seem to be mostly doomed or completely doomed. I'm hoping there's a third option. So each storyline is going to, um, to drive students to the, the instruction itself, and it's going to relate. So what's happening here is that they are trying to get from point A to point B, um, but as you can see, there's a lot of mist and fog and treacherous rocks, and, and they're not quite sure how they're going to navigate it. But our friend Ruby over here comes up with a really smart idea for how to do this safely, but she's not quite ready to take on a leadership role to guide her, her peers through this um, treacherous landscape. And so then what you have to do um, with your friends here is figure out how you can convince her that she can take on this leadership role. And to do so, you need to understand um, a little bit more about who she is, what motivates her so that you can um, you know, leverage the right aspects to convince her to take on this role. And so that launches you into your, um, your module on characterization um, in, in text. Um, and so each close reading uh, instructional focus starts within um, I do, we do, you do model. So students are first um, given information about the topic at hand and given opportunities to demonstrate that they, they grasp the concept before they're going to do guided close reading with actual text. So really looking at the individual words authors are using and analyzing why they're making their, these choices and what they're meant to evoke from a reader um, and into an argument and all those great rich things. Um, and then students are going to apply that skill back to the narrative. So here, students are going to use what they've learned about this close reading topic alongside Ruby and, and convince her that she can take on this leadership role. We know how important it is for students to have a reason to do something that's really hard, and that's why we really wanted to make that the focus of our, our, of our various narratives. Um, so students would then round this out with um, a practice in the e-reader um, with the same functionalities that we saw earlier. Um, so that is a very quick demo of the program. I also just want to, you know, we just talked a lot about the digital side of the program, uh, the personalized experience for students, but also wanted to flag that we have all these resources for teachers to use to do their own small group work. And we also have a lot of discussion guides that are focused on social emotional learning, writing prompts based on the narratives and also skill extensions. So as you're thinking about what back to school looks like, whether it's remote or in person, Amplify Reading could be used in a number of different ways um, as part of your rotations, as part of your daily ELA block that you're asking students to do. Um, uh, just something to think about as you are planning your, your back to school um, options. 
Uh, so hopefully this gave you a good sense of, of Amplify Reading in general and, and why, um, how, we, how we engage our students, how we personalize both the, the narratives but also the content students are seeing, um, some of the research behind our approaches and why we're seeing such strong growth in our students. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions if they came up or Brent, if you want to, to say any words to wrap up. I'll give everybody a moment just to, if they want to ask a question, they can. Um, can I recommend that we, um, I don't know if our participants can unmute themselves. Looks like talking is permitted, so they're in, they can unmute if they so choose, Carmilla. So we'll let y'all y'all think on that. But uh, again, I just I think some of the the things that are up here on the screen now are really things to consider. Um, I know that as we move into uh, this year, uh, this idea of making sure that students have a meaningful way to do independent work, uh, especially in the K two realm. Uh, that's very much supportive of them uh, developing as readers and, and building upon those foundational skills is so critical. And it's a hard piece, whether you're in person or in virtual settings, to do that individualized instruction. And so one of the things that we appreciate from Amplify Reading is just the, the real thoughtfulness and the research behind um, how this system is, is creating that uh, support for students. Uh, while developing those areas, but also solving for the biggest thing that we struggle with the kids period and that is engagement and the desire to want to do things. And so hopefully you saw that through the different learning experiences where um, kids would gravitate towards this because of the storylines and the um, and the way that everything is brought together to make it to where they kind of go into their world and the place that they want to go and join. So um, we'll give it one more sec to, to ask any questions, but I'll leave it today uh, before I open it back up to just say um, everything that we've always done with our districts that we partner with uh, begins with a conversation about the issues that you're facing. Hopefully this does address some of the issues, but if you're still thinking about those things, please reach out to our individuals within your areas. Um, Carmela, Jana, Christy, myself, uh, Carrie, we're all here to make sure that you can continue the conversation. We'll follow this up with a recording of this session so that you have that um, and hope to continue to talk with you all to help be a partner in your plans moving forward. Laura, thank you so much for the time today. Really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. Um, uh, it's, it's been a valuable time, hopefully the same thing from our, our participants, and uh, we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thank you, Laura. I do not see any Q&A or chat, so I think we're good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Signing off.